as a young kid in school, I was horrified about what happened in the First World War, Second World War. And then growing older, I thought, you know, I'm sure we've gotten over it. But think as we sit here, there must be a daughter whose mother just died of Ebola. What is going on in this girl's mind? Or think of the people in Syria who's displaced. So the theme of my life is to think about how can we create a social environment which can live with the people how they are. So, you know, kind of, I know myself, I have a lot of deficiencies. So if I'm put in the wrong environment, I'll take the wrong decisions. So how could we create a social system which is stable, which does not derail? So for me, if you stand back and look at society from a far distance away, doesn't it remind us of a chemical reaction? Highly complex, lots of different forces. And very much like a chemical engineer, we should think what mechanisms can we put in place to stabilize that reaction process. So I've been thinking about this for many years. And in private, come up with ideas, and always trying to implement those ideas in life and you know, try to build things. Now, what I want to do here is focus on three themes. One is a very general statement, just which might seem too trivial even to mention it, but I think it's quite important. Then, to address an issue which kind of is important for each one of us from a very personal point of view. And then, third, I'm sure you have heard about Bitcoin and the underlying technology, just to show how in the financial market and how we do business, things are going to change dramatically. You have seen it, all these kind of pictures of the universe, Earth moving at a high speed, kind of the whole kind of universe expanding. And then in these beautiful science films from BBC, you see what's happening within kind of, a kind of an atom, how it moves rapidly, how within cells things are in movement. So if we think about it, everything is moving. And now in our thought processes, the concepts that we're being taught in school, isn't the assumption which people show us is let's make things simple and start off with fixed blocks. And then we move those blocks. But isn't reality something quite different, where everything is moving, and when you drive on a highway and you overtake a car at 120 kilometer and the other one moves at 120 kilometer at the same time, you can watch the driver. You know, he doesn't seem to be moving at all. It's static. But actually, both of you are driving at 120 kilometers speed per hour. So isn't that what we see in society? That everything is moving at a high pace. Occasionally, we're in sync, but actually on a high roller coaster. So why am I mentioning this? Is because the world is dynamic. And now, just use an analogy. I love bicycling because it's so efficient to get from A to B. But if you have your bicycle chain just lying on the ground, you know, you can take one link out, two links, five links, shorten it, whatever. It's not important. But when you drive your bicycle, every link is essential. And why do I mention that? is to raise the importance that if you look at things in a dynamic context, the relevance of each link is quite different. So that's the first statement. It's dynamic, and everything that the small things matter, and the small things do matter, because we just heard about computer programs, a small bug, and the whole thing sucks. So it's a different approach. Now, the second point, you know, here, there are roughly 300 people. Now, I'm talking to each of one of you. And each one of you has at least 50 people that I don't know. Now, 
when we heard this interesting talk of how to bring light to the rural areas, you go home and tell that to your friends. And your friends will tell it to their friends, and their friends to their friends. Why am I mentioning this? Have you ever thought of the following? So, you have one person, he knows 50 people, and each of those 50 people knows another 50 people. So 50 times 50 is 2,500. And each of those people knows 50 people that the others don't know. Again, times 50. In only six links, you have 15 billion people. Now, why is this worth mentioning? That means that everything that you do actually is far more important. Because what you do influences your neighbor, and the neighbor's neighbors, and propagates. So, first, when we think about modern society, you know, kind of, we're daunted. 7.2 billion people. What does it matter how I behave? No, it matters a hell of a lot. So, when you're here at this conference, hear different talks, you're doing something very important. You're a filter of messages. And you decide which messages can carry out there and which will kind of propagate. And the same thing is, whatever you do in your everyday life, actually it will be copied and kind of will propagate around the society. So, if you ask yourself, why was it possible for Gandhi to kind of liberate kind of India? Because he started a grassroots movement. So it's really up to you to start a grassroots movement. If we are frustrated at what's going on in the world, we can change it. And why can we change it? Because in a dynamic context, where we talk to each other, where we depend on each other, what we do is actually only six links away from the most distant person in the world. So as soon as this seeps in, we realize we're not just one out of 7.2 billion people, but actually, like in a small room, we're one of eight. And each one of you has the weight and significance of, you know, and you'll be shocked, hundreds of millions of people. So this is really a call to action for grassroots movement. Now, if I come and you know, give these suggestions, you say, mm, you know, kind of, it isn't that easy. But actually, we're in a world where technology is coming in and some fabulous innovations are coming. I'm sure some of you have heard of Bitcoin, this kind of new currency which we use to kind of pay things. And you've heard of big volatility and you've heard of kind of entities which go bust, terrible. But have people told you that this technology uses something absolutely fantastic? Let me briefly explain. So underneath this kind of new currency is a kind of bookkeeping system. And for us Swiss, that's easy to understand. Because in Switzerland, when we try to buy a piece of property of land, we have to go to a notary. That is, if I meet you in the street and you tell me, you sell me your land, I can't do the transaction just on the road. I can only buy and sell the land if it's officially recorded at the notary. And this is fabulous because if I want to buy a land, I just go and check at the notary who owns the land. And if my name is in this kind of register, then I'm the owner. I don't have to fight for it, it's there. So, why am I mentioning it in this context? Because underneath this kind of Bitcoin, this new currency, is a distributed ledger technology. So very much like we have a notary in Switzerland, which keeps track of ownership of land, this ledger can be used to track ownership of assets. And why is this so important? When I go into a shop, and I want to pay them with something, 
you know, the shop wants to be pretty certain that actually I, you know, it gets something. So today, how do we have to solve it? You know, I have to bring either cash like this, or I use a credit card. And the credit card, we all know, has these huge fees. Now, wouldn't it be much nicer that if I go into the shop, I pay, and my payment is being recorded in this official ledger? So the shop owner has complete certainty. Yes, I'm getting something in return. And why do I mention the here? Because that will create a very new world where actually the number of different means of payment will increase dramatically. Recently, I had to go and buy lots of things, and I would have loved to pay with my air miles. But I can't. I have to pay with regular cash. So wouldn't it be great if, when you start a new enterprise, that this new enterprise could either pay with its own shares, or if one of the owners owns shares of a big company, he could use his shares to pay for his services. So I envisage that this ledger mechanism of Bitcoin will be used for any type of financial asset. And that will have the effect that actually society will become much more open as opposed to just having Swiss francs, euros, or yens, which we need to pay with. We can actually use Facebook shares, Google shares, or we could use kind of electricity, or, you know, kind of to be a little provocative, we could use the share of any kind of asset. The big thing today is the uncertainty which we face when we do business. And the uncertainty arises because you don't have certainty of what you receive. The distributed ledger mechanism of, that underlines Bitcoin will actually enable us to convert society into a kind of global eBay, which is an eBay of virtual goods, where we can pay with any type of asset. And that is especially valuable for kind of the smaller countries, which today are disenfranchised. They are outside the kind of financial system which we have, and the new financial system will provide them with much more liquidity. And with liquidity, it's possible to kind of build a business, as you have explained, and kind of start to do, make economic progress. So I would argue today, if we look back, it's quite simple. We first have to understand the world is dynamic and moves at all different levels. Secondly, it really does matter what we do as individuals. And it matters far more than you would first guess because of this small world phenomenon. And thirdly, we have marvelous technology which will come online, but it will only succeed if we, as individuals, realize our responsibility. And our responsibility is that we have to take action. And we cannot just rely on the big guys to decide for us. We have to do a grassroots movement. So hope that we'll see a world which is you know, far more peaceful and which will continue to evolve as a chemical reaction, but without these big outliers that we see today. Thanks.